Hello and welcome to another video. This is my year two, semester two mod review in business analytics in NUS. So let's get started. Ow. So yes guys, we are in our summer internship season. That's why we're in a suit right here. I'll be talking about six modules that I took this semester. Starting with the core mods, we have BT3102, Computational Methods for Business Analytics. BT3017, Feature Engineering for Machine Learning. The big old CS2040, Data Structures and Algorithms. IS3103, Information System Leadership and Communication. And ALS1010, Learning to Learn Better. PLS8002, Cultivating the Self. And I was also a TA for IS1108, Digital Ethics and Digital Privacy. CS2040, Data Structures and Algorithm, the massive elephant in the room, okay? So in fact, right, I have uh, two friends right here like to tell you more about their experiences. Mr. Li Etzo over here to tell us more about CS2040 and his mod review. I will say that CS2040 is probably a very important foundational mod for anyone who is interested in tech jobs because majority of the lead code questions that uh, a person has to do will somehow resemble CS2040 type questions. And it's important to have um, Java background before you take this mod. If not, for the first few weeks, you'll be spending your time studying Java while everyone is busy studying how to implement codes instead. This module, right, might be one of the most important modules out there for you. Okay, not because it's important, because of the knowledge that it brings to the table as a, as a, as a you know, a computing student, it's very important. If you're pursuing a career in software engineering, you will 100% meet lead code questions, right? And if you're just, you know, going for some other tech technical roles in a big company like Fang, they would always ask you lead code questions just to filter you, just to get you through the whole system, make sure you know your shit. So everybody, almost everybody would need these knowledge and these algorithms and the basic understanding of sorting and graph structures as well. So very important to take this module and very important to understand. I won't say to do well, but to understand. So, the workload for this is really insane, right? It's best if you have experience before taking this module, which some people might have, right? So, you can understand like, wow, how did this person finish this? How did they think of this on the spot? Honestly, some of them might have experience beforehand because you can definitely practice before taking this module, something you can learn on your own, and you can definitely practice a lot during this module as well. Please give us some background of who you are. Oh, background. Okay, uh, I'm a, I'm actually an econ major that is minoring in CS. So, yeah. Then would you say the workload wise, as compared to maybe some of your arts mods, how does it compare? <laughs> arts mod? Mm, my drawing mod? No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> let me think. I think this is definitely one of the more intense one because. Oh, there's, because there's a lot of, what's it called, grading criteria. So it's like you're graded based on your assignments and your, or your midterms, your one-day assignment, your take-home assignments. So yeah, you need to be like very consistent. Mm. Like, if other mods, it's just like what, 40% final, 30% midterm, 30% something, you can like breeze through it. Like, but this one, you need to be very, very consistent for work. So yeah. for like arts mods, it's kind of just like three assessment criteria, whereas this is like six, right? Uh, okay, it depends on the mods, lah, but yeah, this one, this one is more, more intense, as in, just, it just demands, demands more from you. So, this is like the workload breakdown, okay? There is weekly medium difficulty, one day lead code style questions on the Catis platform. There's also a bi-weekly, two, two week medium hard questions to solve on top of the one day assignments. There's two visual algorithm quizzes, there's one midterm and one finals, and there's lab and tutorial participation for the whole semester. Come on, it's like a it's like a boot camp, right? It is like a marathon. Would you say this module is fun? <laughs> I think yeah, I think okay. wait, I think the funny thing about this is like so many people take this mod and you are bound to have like friends who are like TAs for this and like the the classes or the tutorials like under them. Because we planned our tutorial classes together, so it's like it's nice knowing that like Everyone is doing the same, doing the same stuff. 
yeah, like meeting friends or friends. Like, you know, this, this, if you're like wondering how to make friends in university, this is, <laughs> I guess this is one of the one way, you know, everybody suffers mm. through this. Please take it with friends because this, a lot of people are taking this module. Engineering students, you know, TSA students, data science students are all taking it. So it becomes very enjoyable to bounce off pseudocode ideas, to go to lessons, to, you know, and just, just suck it out, you know, make some inside jokes here and there. I think it's fun. So even though I had a lot of 3 a.m. sleepless nights, right, and I was pulling my hair out most of the time, it was at least fun with my friends, you know. Try and take it with your friends. Like, I don't recommend taking it alone because uh, sometimes it's not about just not knowing the module or stuff like that. It's just that uh, you kind of need that motivation mm. to, to be able to do your assignment because no one's going to force you to do that, right? So as an engineering student, do you think um, you recommend people to take this path or why do you actually take 2040? I would say for engineering students that uh, want to move out of engineering into tech roles like whether you are going the SW path or the AI path, right? Mm -hmm. You kind of need to take 2040. It's like a non-question because like uh, big picture wise, right? 2040 is still a very, very foundational module. Engineering students who are not very keen in terms of the tech roles, right? Uh, it's not that programming is not important for you all. You guys will still need to study programming, but you have to learn it in a different manner. Like let's say if you are into robotics and stuff like that, then yeah, you have to learn it uh, for robotics instead of uh, doing data structure and algorithm. And so at the end of the day, if you have a strong cat base and you're thinking, hey, maybe I should try out going to the tech sector, then I think it's kind of recommended that you have to take 2040. <laughs> right. Yes. Do you have any tips for people who want to take different courses that want to take a CS module? Uh, I think, okay, for me, it's definitely planning. I have to push everything to year three and year four, so I have to overload in like my later years. So if you know what you want, you should plan earlier and you should like take those, like the compulsory CS mods earlier. Yeah, uh, I only decided I wanted to minor in um, second major in CS, like in year two, so and year, and like second major requires a lot of like commitment so it's like you need to take like a lot of compulsory courses mm. so yeah uh basically now my year three year four is quite stacked so if you know you want to do it then you should like take the 10 10 like the cs 1010 mods like the intro mod earlier then take 2040 like the following sem so it's like you can quickly know whether the second major is right for you la. biggest takeaway oh i think is to utilize your tas so BT3102, Computational Methods for Business Analytics, alright? I think this is really the mod to understand Bayesian networks. And this is like super important and super relevant because it's the basis of natural language processes such as um, the current explosive growth of ChatGPT, right? Um, it is honestly very, very mathematical. So many symbols that I learned, symbols, huh? Greek symbols that I've never seen in my life. It covers, this whole module covers a tour of Bayesian network and the crazy thing is that, you know, this topic is actually never ending. It is still currently in a lot of research. Um, yeah, definitely huge and very steep learning curve. Uh, due to the, but due to the cons consistent workload and projects, I think you're understanding it quite well. And, um, and the project is like really hard at first because you have to write a Python script, detect a text file of tweets, and then perform here the Markov model and vertebrae alg algorithm. And it's like legit such a pain to code in Python after like you know being so accustomed to Jupyter notebooks and being accustomed to R from the previous modules. You know I have not touched a .py file since CS 1010s. But you know, I guess I guess it's quite enjoyable, it's not too bad. The you know, finals weren't like super hard even though the content they teach were like very very abstract and very heavy. I mean in my opinion. Uh, but I feel like again, like all other ML mods, I feel like I'm I've become like a lot smarter right, like, after taking this module. So for BT3017, feature engineering for machine learning. I feel like this module okay, first off, this module is only taught in semester 2 so 
um, this, be sure to take note of that. I think it's a very important module for most of your specializations. Uh, it covers most specializations. Uh, I think the prof teaches quite well. I find the content a little bit lacking though. It's quite useful again because it covers all the basics of machine learning. Uh, if you just did BT2103 in the previous semester, this is like really familiar for the first half. Oh shit. Neural networks, machine, line, uh, machine learning pipeline, and also MA2001, get a lot of um, matrix, linear algebra. And then it becomes a bit more interesting. It teaches you a lot more PCA, graphs, and also audio, you know, machine learning audio. Um, yeah, it's a relatively new module, so don't let, they don't really have a lot of projects uh, and pass your paper. So yeah, a lot of emphasis on understanding on the finals, and the tutorial is quite light. The project is very open-ended. Our project was about CSV data of 100k commuters, traveling patterns, and we're supposed to graph stuff to feedback as urban planners. Yeah, also I got a very easy question I got wrong during the finals and I think I dropped a grade because of that. We have IS3103, Information Systems, Leaderships and Communication. All I can say that is my first ever A+, hell yeah. Um, yeah, it's also a testament to how bullshit the grading is for IS101, right? I legit think I deserve an A grade for that. Somehow they screwed me up and gave me a B+, right? Anyways, yeah, anyways, let's look into that. Also, this module is ra like randomly groups you up into um, different groups, so get to know your cohort, get to know people across BZ A and you know, information systems. You know, I have a really nice senior that was on the last semester. You know, talk to her about internships, talk to her about how life is like. Oh yeah, workload sounds very intense, but it's actually relatively chill at the same time. Okay, there is tutorial participation, recitation participation, two presentations. Um, a project proposal, a simulation game. It's a very cool like game by Harvard you, where you play as a CTO and you have to face some like uh, tr trouble, you know, like some DDoS attack. Um, and there's also a reflection journal. So yeah, you know, just like typical reflection journal. So I had a really good time, you know, learning and teaching. I kind of wish I had more time to talk to my group mates, you know. Um, yeah, I had a very good tutorial TA. Mr. Dixon, who I've had a really lovely chat about entrepreneurship. All right, unfortunately, my camera died as we're about to wrap up on filming. Um, yeah, I'm sorry you have to deal with this MacBook Air M1 720p front camera, right? These are the famous uh, CSCU modules that you might have come across and you might want to take. Um, first off, you know, CFG. There's so many CFG out there. There's also ALS modules, there's also PLS modules, and you know, a lot more that I kind of probably missed. Um, yeah, let's start off with CFG 104, which I forgot to mention. Um, it's about financial literacy, a 2MC module that you can literally finish in a day. Um, I think it's very good for those people who have no knowledge in financial literacy, take the time to read through it. Um, if you have the patience, uh, that's it. That, that's it uh. um, for me, I think I'm, I am I know a little bit about finance and financial literacy, Bruh. that's why I kind of speak through it. Uh, they talk about, you know, theft, um, investing, bonds, and uh, risk tolerance, and your goal setting, all those stuff. Um, yeah, be sure to make sure that you take CFG 103, a uh, zero MC module, the semester before, before you can take this module. You like, kind of like, unlock it, in, like a uh, skill tree type of sense. Um, yes, okay, next we have ALS 1010, learning to learn better. So if you're the type of guy who, you know, have the whole studying method like nailed down already, you, uh, you research, you're privy to all your own like studying needs and methods. So don't need to take this model, right? But if you're the type of guy who like, you know, just sits there for eight hours and then you're like, you smash your head in and you're like, wow, ah, why is nothing going in? Take this module, right? You start to learn a little bit on how to be more conscious about your own needs and your science techniques and um, you know there's, there's things such as um, you know inter intertwining your learning um, there's also very interesting stuff such as uh, talks by guest speakers that are, you know experts in sleep and in psychology so like you know get to know a little bit more on like how the circadian rhythm actually affects your body and how to, to, to you know use this this knowledge and understanding to you know plan your days around plan your goals around um, yeah I also strongly suggest you to you know if possible meet up 
with the, um, a tea session for like the networking session at the end of the semester. You know, we really, as NU students, we really need to catch up to those SMU kids who have networking sessions every week, okay? Go out there, talk, and you know, mingle. And exchange details is a, it's a, it's a fact, it's not even a faculty, but it's a school-wide module that anybody from different faculties can take. And lastly, we have the PLS 8002B. B stands for the second half of the semester, which you'll be taking this module. Um, you can take the A as well. It just depends on whether you're lucky enough to bid for it. Um, yeah, it talks a little bit on like happiness and satisfaction and also self-confidence, you know, different topics. Two, um, okay, four weeks of lessons. So two of it will be lectures, online lectures, and two of it will be physical tutorials, all right? This is impossible to fail, right? There's like a really mini quiz, like five question quiz, right? And you just have to get like three correct. They're super lenient, right? And even if you don't get three correct, the TA will come and like give you a second chance. But somehow some guy in my, in my tutorial class failed it. And you know, the, the teacher, the, the TA said like, you know, come find me after class. And he just walked out of class, man. He failed the one MC module on the second week. That's how ridiculous it is. Also, please like don't fail this really easy and I won't say it's useless alright no module is useless it is very interesting that to take something out of your core module right just you know, step out of your comfort zone and you start to understand like topics that you never really thought about like how money does indeed bring happiness up to a certain level and then every other factor really plays a huge role in your happiness such as your, your free time and and your friends and family members, a lot of other like things at play. And that concludes our year two SAM two mod review. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the next one.